Hello, I'm Martijn Graat and this is Does Logistics Matter? A podcast on trends and innovations in supply chain and logistics. This episode is brought to you by Manifest Vegas, the supply chain and logistics event that brings together the most comprehensive ecosystem of those innovating and transforming end-to-end supply chain and logistics. February 5, 6 and 7 in Las Vegas. Visit manifestvegas.com slash logistics matter for more information. Answering yes to the question today is Brian Gaunt, Vice President of Accelerated Digitalization at DHL Supply Chain. In this episode, we talk about the latest developments in automation and robotics, the benefits of using robotics in warehouse operations, and the impact on warehouse workers. Please enjoy my conversation with Brian Gaunt. Hi, Brian. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, it's uh, Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, the first question of this podcast is always the same. And that question is, does logistics matter? Absolutely, logistics matters. I think it uh, shapes how we get everything in our lives today. So absolutely matters. Yeah, and uh, it absolutely does. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that it's, that's, we have another yes. Um, how, how did you end up working in logistics? Yeah, good question. Um, my background, I started in a, a, with a specialty retailer and then um, shifted over to logistics uh, where I am today, which I thought, you know, is an exciting field, growing field, lots of opportunity and uh, gives us an opportunity to work with a lot of great people and technology. Well, we're actually, um, well, uh, I'm a former colleague of sorts because uh, I started my logistics career uh, with DHL supply chain in the Netherlands in, uh, in 2007. Um, but uh, the, but the, the, the world of warehousing uh, looked way different uh, than what it looks like now. Um, so so if, we look at, if we look at warehousing now, uh, what does the world look like in terms of uh, uh, challenges and opportunities? Oh yeah, the warehouse now compared to the warehouse of 2007 is highly automated, highly integrated. Uh, we yeah. have connected warehouse management systems that help drive um, automation and robotic solutions in the warehouse. So uh, much more efficient, much more productive than um, the warehouses of, of yesterday. And and um, so so there's 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 many pro- processes right in a in a, in a warehouse uh, f- uh, all the way from when the f- the goods arrive and we have the inbound processes of getting it out of the uh, out of the truck and into the warehouse uh, to to order picking inventory management and then order picking and then getting it back out so so if we if we look at at uh, at at, the, at these processes. Um, can, can you can you tell us about some of the latest developments that are that are going on with uh, with automation and uh, and robotics? Oh, absolutely. So yeah, obviously, supply chain is quite broad, broad, but specifically within the warehouse environment, um, these types of automations um, we apply to basically every part of the warehouse. Um, we, you know, as you described, we look at the warehouse as a series of of different use steps. Um, Mm-hmm. Your d- traditional flow in a warehouse, we have, you know, inbound, as you described, and, and put away, and and then we manage the inventory, and then we ship it out for our customers. So um, we have uh, solutions that follow the entire gamut of those processes. Um, we have automated ways to unload trucks and trailers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use uh, different pieces of automated equipment to put those away and store them. Um, and then a variety of different options just to based upon the type of orders our customers have to pick those and ship those out. So quite a, quite a wide array. So, so can you take us uh, through a, a few examples? No, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, just starting from the inbound process, we have um, fully automated solutions that will, um, automated forklifts that will unload pallets from the back of the mm-hmm. trailer and bring them into the inbound side of things. Um, also, some of our products are not on pallets. Um, they are loose in the container. So we have yep. um, fully automated robotic arms that are taking those uh, cartons or containers and unloading them in the warehouse. So just starting from an inbound process, um, you know, both of those processes um, 
we have solutions for. Nice. So, so, so then, uh, then the goods need to be put away in the warehouse. Uh, is that as is that something where uh, automation is being used? It is. Yeah. So we do have um, warehouses that are using um, fully autonomous forklifts uh, to take pallets from the inbound dock and um, put those away in in storage areas and racking in the warehouse. Uh, so just you know, strictly from a put away perspective, we use. Um, those types of solutions. We also have smaller robots, um, depending on where we're putting the product away, that'll put them back in a, you know, a case pick kind of lo location or each pick location mm -hmm. as well. So, yep. kind of, you know, just uh, different types of solutions based upon how they're stored. And um, so, 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 if you uh, so if you look at the at at the past years and uh, and and the current state of technology, so how, how has this developed? Developed quite rapidly. Um, you, you know, you know, we are fortunate enough that there's been a host of different vendors and opportunities, I'd say over the past four to eight years that have really, there's been a lot of heavy investment in this area. And, mm -hmm. um, the outcome of that is some really fantastic solutions on the market that have really kind of pushed, um, the warehouse that we operate today to be much more efficient. Um, you know, we use goods to person solutions, um, traditional automation as well to drive these uh, productivity increases. So, uh, you know, we've really seen this grown. Uh, obviously, you know, as the world went through the, the COVID pandemic, it pushed mm -hmm. the need um, to, to fully automate these warehouses and uh, just to be able to serve our, our customers. And what were the main drivers? Is that is that uh, the, the fact that uh, you wanted to uh, bring down the number of people that were that are used in the in the in the in the process, or or just because uh, uh, robots could take care of the work faster? What was the what was the driver? Yeah, the driver to, to automate is you know usually a couple things. One, you know, we want to automate jobs that are are challenging and very difficult for associate, or stressful or strainful. Um, yeah. So just to make the process easier, uh, the other driver, as you mentioned, is just to increase productivity. Um, we're able to get, you know, more product through the door and out the door uh, using automation uh, than than more of a manual approach today. So really, those are the two drivers from a, a people point of view. Our associates have have really just benefited from from having them to work alongside of them and created some other opportunities for them as well. Yeah, and I, and I was wondering about that because, you know, um, a lot of the times you hear, um, uh, well, what they say is like the robots are coming and everybody's going to lose their job, right? It's the same with AI. Now we have AI is everybody's going to lose their job, you know, and they were saying the same, I guess, when uh, when the car was invented. Uh, so so it's a, it's a, it's kind of a repetitive story. Um, so so but how has uh, so how has uh, automation and robotics, uh, how has that impacted um, the, the the workforce? I mean, actually, it's helped it tremendously. Um, you know, it one um, and individuals want to work with um, technology and it actually is a recruiting tool. We actually get more people working for us because uh, we have warehouses that are working with the latest technology. The other opportunity is it really provides growth and job opportunities. So their job um, of yesterday, uh, we're training individuals to work collaborative, you know, with robots and, you know, they can go in their day and learn a partic particular technical skill to operate these solutions. So uh, much higher job satisfaction, satisfaction as well as um, actually lower turnover as well. So a lot of benefits from associate side of things. So, so what, what are what are um, what are the, the popular popular technologies? Um, yeah, we really uh, have a pretty wide variety of technologies. When we look at automation in our warehouse, we we kind of group them logically to to two larger groups: more traditional mm -hmm. traditional automation, which would be um, you know your your high speed conveyor sorters, your large yeah. ASRS solutions. Um, and there's a lot of focus and there is definitely a fit for those types of solutions. Mm -hmm. Um, the other area that's really grown is more mobile robotics. So, um, these types of solutions, um, cobots or fully autonomous robots, 
are able to be um, deployed in existing warehouses and new warehouses um, and really handle those volume needs of the of our customers. So these are the the cobots and fully autonomous type of um, forklifts. So so um, um, I you know I guess a cobot is a robot, but not robots are are cobots. So when do you call something a cobot, and when do you call something a, a robot or a fully automated system? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so for for us, um, a cobot or collaborative robot mm-hmm. is um, an or completes the task. The task is um, being completed partially from the robot and partially from the person. So for example, um, some of our each picking solutions have a mobile robot that will go from location to location, um, fully autonomous, and they will interact with that robot. And then we'll have a person that actually um, picks the physical item um, and then places it to fulfill the order. So that would be our definition of a cobot is in order to complete that kind of work cycle, uh, we want to have the automation complete as much as we can. Uh, but the reality is some of these edge cases are just quite difficult um, for automation to solve yet. So instead of waiting for the solution to be fully automated, we're able to uh, take advantage of automating as much as we're, we're able possible. So, so in this example, um, uh, there's there's uh, human workers that are responsible for a certain area in the warehouse, and then a robot enters that area and uh, goes to to the approximate location where the goods need to be picked, and then the person picks them. Yes, is that was that the example? Yeah, that's the example, and we have um, nearly five thousand of those robots globally deployed doing that same same type of work. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that's that's very interesting. And is uh, so. Um, and you said uh, because what I what I actually uh, meant by uh, popular technology is: Have you found that uh, certain types of technology used in the in the warehouse? And this, this can be robots, but this can o- also be I don't know, smart glasses or or or, or pick uh, pick by voice or pick by that. So, so those types of technologies uh, and robot. What are are um, technologies that you have found are uh, p- popular with the workforce. So which ones are they like keen to use or keen to try? Oh, which, which do our associates enjoy working around? Yeah. 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 I, I really think that covers a lot of different ones. So the cobots mm-hmm. for sure that we already spoke to the autonomous forklifts, um, the autonomous unloaders, um, they really just enjoy working around the solutions and kind of amazed of, of the work it can complete. Uh, even our traditional kind of goods to person type of solutions, you know, um, the type of work our associate does working with those has changed dramatically. So mm-hmm. um, from a particular technology, I think it runs across multiple different ones. Mobile mobile robotics are uh, autonomous fleets. Um, so, yeah, pretty variety, a uh, wide variety of solutions that um, they enjoy working around. I, I guess that makes sense also because people are different, right? So you have people that would that really love the 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 fact that the robot follows them around and and uh, helps them with all sorts of things, and other people don't want the robot to follow around, but they they wouldn't mind if one would come by now and again to uh, to come and get something. So there's different different kinds of people uh, and 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 different kinds of technology. So let's take a, f- a few uh, processes, standard processes in the warehouse, yep. and, and maybe you can explain um, uh, how robots have been uh, put into these uh, 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 processes and, and how this has changed the work for um, uh, for the pickers or for the packers or, or for forklift drivers or, you know, well, warehouse associates. Yeah, I think um, probably the, I mean, that we have, most of our processes automated to different degrees across the warehouse and across different mm-hmm. um, sites, but definitely probably the outbound picking process is the process that's um, most consistently automated. Um, and this could be, um, again, it depends on our particular customer, um, whether it's a e-commerce type of customer peak picking each uh, to fulfill an e-com order or um, a different type of customer doing store level fulfillment that we're picking cases or pallets. But um, that workflow from a 
enabling us to um, use automation to pick orders um, has a lot of different benefits. One, from an associate perspective, um, they're able to do these with less strains. Um, so it's it's easier yeah. on them from, from a regular basis. Um, almost always usually less walking, so and, and less kind of lifting to do these types of functions, which mm -hmm. is um, which is really important to us. Um, as well as meeting our customers' demands, um, applying these automations allow us to, um, you know, meet and exceed our service level agreements that we can fulfill orders faster and we can fill, fulfill more orders in a smaller period of time. Um, and, and that's quite important to us that um, we are able to maintain, you know, inventory accuracy and speed and efficiency um to um get those orders out the door yeah and are there are there certain uh are there certain industries or certain uh types of customers that are um where where robotics and automation make more sense to use or or less i think traditionally there's quite a lot of solutions around um, each picking in e-commerce um so if we think of um picking today um you we you spend more more people labor hours based upon the smallest level of unit. So what I mean, it takes typically more people to each pick versus yeah. case picking versus pallet picking. So because of that, um, there has been a lot of solutions developed to to um, address each picking and making each picking more efficient. So as an industry and other industry leaders. There's a lot of um, different types of solutions on the market that drive efficiencies for each picking. So I would say of one area in particular across, you know, all of our space and supply chain, each picking has probably been the, the piece that's been the most automated in the last five years. Um, and then now we see trends moving to automate those other types of quantities that we would um, pick as well. So a full case or a full pallet. And those have been a little slower to adopt, but there is solutions today that that help push those processes um, to, to drive more efficiency as well. But, you know, traditionally our, ourselves and, and others are, are really have focused on automating that each picking side and then now moving to other processes in the warehouse. Hmm. Do, do you have personal favorites, uh, you know, and I'm, and I'm not saying like, you know, like a, a, I'm not talking about like a favorite supplier or something, but is there a certain type of robot that that just, you know, that you just like because of how it moves or, or because of how it solves a problem or uh, do you have that? I don't know about favorites. We have a lot of great vendors and partners, so I don't know if I'll um, necessarily pick a favorite. I, bet, I, bet. I, I, I was trying to, to move around that because I can understand that you you don't want to you don't want to uh, favor a supplier. No, I, I can I can appreciate the ask and the question. Um, I think in general, what I've seen in trends, um, vendors are becoming more sophisticated. So we're there is a trend in just the last couple of years to use three D vision camera to mm -hmm. use um, AI to help make the solutions even smarter. So I do believe, you know, going into 2024, we're at a, a, a point in time that we're ready to elevate automation in the warehouse. And that's because of these technology shifts that we have today. So um, advanced AI, uh, 3D vision, and different types of um, neural networks and learning are being applied to the warehouse environment. And what does that mean? It allows um, these solutions to navigate better in the warehouse. It allows them to make quote unquote decisions about things. And so, you know, what excites me back to your question on favorite suppliers is suppliers that are staying up with the light, latest technology and taking advantage of moving their solutions to the next level technology yeah. stack. Yeah. 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 No, I, for sure. I can imagine that. No, that, and that's really important. Uh, and it's, it's moving so fast. So any supplier not on top of that, uh, is, is outdated very fast, I guess. Uh, so, 
um, so, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people that look at logistics uh, look at it as something generic, like things go from A to B. So, you know, how, how hard can it be? <laughs> well, we, we know better. Um, and I so and I also know that, uh, you know, one uh, so the one party doing A to B or as we do in the warehouse, we're within A or we are within B. Um, is, is one party is not the same as the other. So, so every every company has a different approach to uh, to uh, to things like automation and and robotics. So, uh, how does um, uh, DHL supply chain's view of automation and uh, and robotics uh, uh, differ from other um, uh, from other uh, logistics companies? No, great question. So, um, within DHL DHL Group and DHL supply chain. Mm -hmm. Driving automation has been a key focus of ours. We have dedicated resources within each region and globally that drives our automation agenda. Um, I think we're different because the way we approach and collaborate with vendors, we are co-developing solutions that are used um, not only within DHL supply chain, but later broader in the market. So we're um, driving overall supply chain efficiency throughout the market. Um, our approach is really to take advantage of our best-in-class supply chain operations, along with our understanding of these technologies mm -hmm. and merging those together um, to drive the most out of automation. So I think the differentiator is, you know, anybody can buy some of these off the shelf, but fully integrating them into the warehouse can be complex and understanding how to get the most out of these tools. And they are tools to help us um, in using advanced data analytics to analyze that data is, is a differentiator for us. Yeah, and, and well, we, we used to have like a WMS uh, sending out, uh, for example, picking orders to, to people and they would, you know, uh, go and pick. But now there's uh, all sorts of machines having to communicate with all these systems as well. So, so what's, your, what's your view on that? Now, my view is, uh, we call that warehouse orchestration. Mm -hmm. So my view is it's absolutely critical. We can no longer have these disjointed systems. Um, at the end of the day, we're trying to um, kind of work together and harmonize both the automation and the associate. And um, there's definitely, uh, as part of getting um, solutions and products through our warehouse, the need for both. Uh, we absolutely need our associates, uh, and we absolutely um, depend on some of the automation to make um, them more efficient as well. So um, the, the orchestration of tasks between um, people and machines is absolutely important um, to ensure we're driving efficiencies. So uh, what, what, are, what are some of the challenges that you're still seeing? In, in automation and uh, because not, you know, not everything is, uh, is positive, right? I mean, there must be some yeah. challenges as well. What are, what are those? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. The challenges is there are, um, you know, people are really good at a lot of things and, um, and not every process in the warehouse is, is able to be automated and, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Um, but I think some of the challenges is, understanding and optimizing those handoff points between um, a portion of the process that's done manually and, and automation and trying to drive the most efficiency out of that those kind of handoffs points. There is a lot of things in the works and on the cusp around automation um, that will continue to make that process even more and more efficient. And we are testing and piloting and being at the forefront of all those things. But um, you know, I think that's what makes the space exciting, honestly. Um, there is, you know, room to continue to grow with these solutions. There's problems that we're continuing to optimize. And, um, you know, to me, that's what makes the industry exciting. So so, so, what, what's around the corner uh, if, if we look at uh, robotics in the warehouse? What's around the corner is... Um, is having these vendors drive automation with more advanced uh, data analytics. So I think um, what we're seeing around the corner is better orchestration. Um, mm -hmm. There's some orchestration tools out there and um, we're utilizing that, but I think there's opportunity to even continue to make that process more efficient. Um, 
there's some technology changes that um, certain vendors are on to to drive process improvements as well. So um, it keeps us on our toes. And you know, for us, we're trying to automate the complete supply chain. So a lot of our conversation today, we've focused on the warehouse, but yeah, you know, um, the um, supply chain to us is is everything from the the manufacturer and optimizing the inbound flows all the way to the warehouse and then all the way to the end uh, customer. So yeah. we have a lot of we have a lot of end to end visibility tools that gives our customers um, access to understanding where their materials are at any point in time. So I think that continued visibility um, is is what is here in some cases and growing in others. Okay, and are there um, and are there a certain technological uh, developments that uh, that you are excited about? So things that are not yet here, but uh, that that you that you've seen and that you think, oh, if we can if we can get that into a warehouse, that will be amazing. Hmm. Well, I think a lot of that is around probably on the data side. Mm-hmm. So um, we've made some real big investments in our data analytics program. So all these solutions that we're putting in creates data. So I think optimizing, and it, it kind of drives more from a software side versus a hardware side. Yeah. Um, to me, um, we have in we have a lot of data. Um, so being able to optimize and and use that data to make um, decisions and predictive analysis is an area of, that continues to grow. Um, we feel that. We're very strong in that space. We have some fantastic use cases that are deployed and utilizing that type of technology. But I think uh, the continued um, focus within AI and data analytics is probably what is in the near term coming, I would Mm -hmm. say, in the next um, two to three years that are continued to make strides. Okay, cool, um, uh, Brian. I'd like to thank you for um, for uh, well updating our listeners on on uh, what's going on at uh, at DHL supply chain or and DHL uh, and DHL group as well uh, when it comes to automation and and robotics and and obviously the uh, the in, immense amount of data that goes with that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. For those interested in robotics and automation, Sally Miller, DHL Supply Chain's Global Digital Transformation Officer, will speak at Manifest Vegas on February 6 about supply chain digitalization. From continuously applying the optimal balance of human, robotic and automated resources within the four walls of distribution centers to coordinating and synchronizing all activities across the entire supply chain network. For more information and a $200 discount on tickets to Manifest 2024, visit manifestvegas.com slash logistics matter. Thank you for listening to Does Logistics Matter? For more on trends and innovation in supply chain and logistics, visit our blog at logisticsmatter.com. If you want to be a guest on this podcast, please send an email to podcast at logisticsmatter.com. The podcast was produced by Dimitri Vleugel. The music is based on a sample by Rockerman and produced by Michael Spengler. This episode was powered by DHL Supply Chain. DHL Supply Chain, part of the DHL Group, is the world's leading logistics provider. Combining management and value-added services with customized integrated logistics solutions drives resilience, efficiency, improves quality and creates competitive advantage. For more information, visit DHL.com. This episode was sponsored by Manifest. Manifest brings together the most comprehensive ecosystem of those innovating and transforming end-to-end supply chain and logistics. Visit Manifest Vegas February 5, 6 and 7 in Las Vegas and experience unprecedented access to the people and technologies changing the way the world moves. For more information, visit manifestvegas.com slash logisticsmatter.